Hello, I'm Ailey, one of our outreach managers. And hi, I'm Tom, our UK country manager. So welcome to the second edition of the cycle of webinars in which we explore the Genially universe. Um, in the past edition, we showed you an overview of the platform. Today, we'll talk about interactivity and effective communication. Thank you so much to everyone that's been with us so far and to those who are here with us now for the live viewing and after. So let's get started. So we're going to show our screen now for you. Now, can everybody see our screen? Well, there will be complaints if not. Sure, my screen look good. Okay. Perfect. So today we'll look at what interactivity is, why we use it, and how it helps us reach our communication goals, the foundations of effective communication with Genially. There'll be a practical segment on how to achieve a wow effect in just a matter of seconds. Uh, we'll show you a genius trick for our advanced users, a pro tip, and at the end, we'll answer your question. So, um, what is interactivity? Interactivity is the ability to control how we consume digital content through an immersive creation. Now, what do we mean by that? This is the sort of thing we can see. We're currently in an explosive era of digital information. We receive hundreds or even thousands of messages a day and the speed and quantity of the information we receive and the way we process this information has changed drastically even in just the last 10 years. When we're in front of a screen navigating and browsing, we take in information in a way that's quite different from how we process what's presented to us by traditional reading. We want information to reach us in a way that is fast, intuitive and creative. To this end, we look for content that stands out from the rest. We choose content that communicates information quickly with the most important points visually prioritized. And if on top of that, it can be easily shared, then even better. Our audience is also looking for this kind of content. Now, this is where interactivity comes in. We're going to look today at how you can create content that your audience loves. OK, so why use interactivity? We know what it is, but what is it used for? First off, interactivity helps you communicate your ideas as a story. It's key for applying storytelling easily. You can create universes of knowledge that your audience can navigate. Combine characters, roles, and aesthetic elements to tell your story. Interactivity also allows you to make connections flow between ideas, allowing your audience to explore your content. You're just a few clicks away from breaking away from traditional linear and flat content. You can strengthen your visual communication and reinforce your message. By linking pages, you'll achieve fluid navigation throughout your creation. You can communicate quickly, intuitively and creatively. So do you want active participation from your audience and for your audience to spend more time on your creation? You can apply interactivity for that. In this way, you'll create an immersive world where your message can captivate your audience. Additionally, interactive content has a lasting impact. Your audience can stroll through the space, making it easier to remember the concepts you introduce over time. Interactivity makes your messages more memorable and meaningful. All of these benefits make for effective communication. Distributing information in interactive layers of content and applying interactivity with tooltips, windows, and linked pages, it becomes easier to take in and understand. In other words, communication is elevated to a new level. So in summary, together, the five elements we just reviewed make for effective communication. Um, to communicate effectively is quite important. And as Gerald Ford said once, if I went back to college again, I'd concentrate on two areas, learning to write and to speak before an audience. Nothing in life is more important than the ability to communicate effectively. With Genially, you'll be able to create a communicative environment similar to real life surroundings, which will help put your information in context maximizing memory and creativity. Basically, you can present your audience with visual metaphors to deliver a message 
bit less. So now that we know that Genially is the perfect tool for creating interactive content, let's look at three templates in the panel section of our platform. So here we have three, um, three templates, one that's basic, one that's a little bit more advanced, and one that will take your content to the next level. This is an example of the basic creation. Within the social category, which we might use to share news about a campaign or discounts with our clients, as you can see. This one just has a 25% discount, for example. In the standard category, um, here you will find uh, the, a guide that allows you to um, have a detailed view into what a company is like so that clients or investors can get to know you better. With guides, we can create um, content that explains, shows, or puts together um, different sections, which creates an immersive communication experience for the audience. You can make guides for your business, like the one you can see in this template, but you can also use guide templates to make travel guides, tutorials, and instructions on how to use an item. It's entirely up to you. Tom, can we see what they're seeing? I just want to make sure it's full for the Hangouts. I think we're fine, but... Yeah. Uh, okay, great. No problem. Thank you. And finally, we can also make complex creations full of interactivity, such as this escape room or escape game or breakout, <laughs> um, which is available in the gamification category. Um, with students or employees, breakouts are a great way to develop qualities like group work, research, critical thinking, and resilience as participants go on an adventure through your content. If it's new to you, just give it a try. It's quite simple with, by using our templates. So now uh, what we will do is go to the hands-on portion of our presentation today, and we'll take a look at how a wow effect can be created in seconds using interactivity. Okay, so this is the panel we're taking to once we log in. In our last webinar, we gave you a basic tour of the panel. If you missed it, you can find it on our YouTube channel. If you're already familiar with our panel, we welcome you to take another look because we have new templates all the time. Today, we're going to edit a click to action creation, which we can find in the gamification category. So I'll go create genially, gamification, and we're going to try the before after flip template today. Uh, we can click on the template to see a preview before deciding to use it. And I think I'm going to preview the effect we're going for. So let's use this template. Now we're taken to the editor. And as you can see, we have this blank. So we're going to start by replacing an image. We want our before of the Eiffel Tower. I have it here in my computer. And it's that simple. And I'm going to add our title here. I have all of our text today in essentially a Word document. So it should be that easy. We have our before. I'm going to go to the second page for our after. And I'll pull this title in. Let's see. And like before, I'm going to replace this image with our after image. And it should fit the size of the original image automatically. What's great is now we can add our interactive effects. So let's say we wanted to add some pins. I would go to resources or interactive elements. We could do either. Let's start with buttons. Under buttons, I have all of these shapes that have their animations built in. So say I choose this one, and you'll see it's already pulsing. And I can modify the button however I want to. So let's say I wanted to make it larger. It's a little too large. There we go. One. And I can change its color. And now I can copy it. And pasting as many times as I want, I can create multiple buttons. So this one's going to have three interactive elements. 
and we can align them later so that it looks a little bit cleaner. Um, to add something inside of these buttons, I'm going to click on this attractivity hand symbol. And we're going to start with a tooltip. We use tooltips when we don't have a lot of information, so something short would be good in a tooltip. The recommendation is 300 characters or less. It's a max, exactly. So let's see, I have a text here ready. I'm going to copy it in. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to. What do we want to do to this? Make it just a little bit bigger. Okay. So there's one. When we see that when we preview, I have to give it a name to be able to visualize. Let's see, I'm going to go to Paris. And we'll be able to see that now our information appears in this button. So we have one. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for these really quickly. So here's text two. It up again, make it larger. And I think for the final button, we can try something fun and add an image. We can spice up our button a little bit. Let's see. We're going to use an image of the mastermind behind the tower. I'll bring him in, apply a mask to make him, to make this image round. And as you can see, it's currently kind of oval shaped. Um, we can crop it. I'll be able to make this now more sort of normally circular. There we go. And say OK. We'll make him button sized. I'm going to add him here to the third button. Tom, does that look about center? Yeah, that <laughs> Okay. Let's see if I can be even a little bit smaller. Okay. So now we have him. I'm going to group these elements with control click to make him, you know, to make this one button. And now I'm going to find my phrase for the third button. And I'll paste this in here. I think we're going to use a window for this one because we have a little bit more text. So the window is going to open in the middle of the screen. And I think medium size is fine. Let's make the font larger again. And there we go. So now we have our preview with our different information, these buttons. Click on this one for our window. We have the before and after flip effect. And the last thing we want to do is make these buttons align. So I am going to control click on all of them. Oops. There we go. And here I have the align option. And now they should all be in more or less the same place. OK, now I can publish. So I'm going to go all set, view. And here we have our final creation with different information, the blurbs, and our flip effect. All right. So that concludes our hands-on portion of the tutorial. I think we're going to move to questions. Yep. So uh, just before we go on to questions, um, just so that you are all aware, um, we will be doing a prize draw, uh, just as we did for the last webinar, where one of our lucky viewers uh, will be able to have the chance to win either a Pro or Edu Pro subscription for a year. And in addition to that, um, those of you who are watching and who subscribed will get an email with a 20% off discount code for a Pro or Edu Pro plan. So just look out for your email. So we're now going to go to the questions. Um, and we'll see uh, what we can answer for you and all the different questions that you may have. So I'm seeing a lot of hellos. Um, let's see. Good to see lots of different countries there, Romania, <laughs> Poland, Croatia. UK, for you. Netherlands, yeah. <laughs> Serbia, okay. Uh, 
Um, we have our superstar Marga is already answering some of these questions. So let's see. We better look. Congenially be embedded or work with Google Classroom? Marga, do we have an answer to that? I know that we were working on this recently. Let's see what else we have in the meantime. <laughs> Where are you watching us from? That's us. Let me see. Um, Tori product is blowing my mind. <laughs> you showed example of what you mean. Probably in, in regards to his, the original question Where is that? about the email. Um, whether or not it could be embedded or work. Yeah. So we have a question about whether Genially can be embedded. No. Previous question. Uh, question about whether Genially can be embedded in emails. And an example would be helpful, I think, for us to clarify. Um, OK, so we can embed Genially in Google Classroom. We should be able to use the HTML code to do so. And I don't know if we have a support article for that right now that explains how. There's a there's a support article for how to embed um, Genialese in websites, which is the sort of primary thing. With emails, um, it depends on the provider, so um, that's not something that's currently supported, really. Okay. Could you do an irregular shape mask? Let's take a look at what we have. So currently, the mask that we offer Go back to our example. The screen is still shared, right? Yeah. OK, so say we have this image again. The current masks we offer are these. So I don't know if you're looking for like to be able to draw the mask or to be able to have a shape that's more like a splash. Um, we may add mask shapes, but for now, these are the shapes that we offer. Mm -hmm. And they're obviously the most popular because they're quite regular. For those who don't know, we have a Spanish webinar covering this content in a few hours. And in an hour or so, there'll also be one in French, for those of you who want to listen to this in French. Uh, a way to embed files such as sound and video. So that's uh, via the insert. Um, and you can insert video, uh, audio, and uh, other external content, such as uh, Google Maps and so on. Um, just by pasting the code and inserting it. And then from there, you can then play around with the format. And we have a lot of options for what you can insert. It's one of the strong points of Genially. Um, but for example, Google Maps will give you an embed code, and a lot of these different platforms will offer their own embed code that you would put in that little gray black box here. We have time for one more question. Yeah, I think we've got time for some more questions. Let's see. What we may have to do is, after this is over, we can catch up with some of these. Because this thread is a little bit hard to follow at the moment. Yeah, I think that's possibly the, the best way. Um, can you embed into an LMS such as Canvas or Brightspace? So uh, you can embed into Canvas or Brightspace. Um, the way to do that is to take the uh, HTML code um, or iframe and embed using the, using the code that is generated. Um, OK, so I think that answers most of the questions. If you um, have any other questions that um, do occur to you uh, over the next few days, hours or so, um, do feel free to contact us at support at genial.ly um, and we'll be able to answer your questions in English, Spanish or French. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, it's been a pleasure to uh, have you guys with us and uh, we look forward to uh, the next time that we do a webinar. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.